Hi there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of tiny and unique homes. In today's video, we're traveling to a tiny house community in Tennessee to take a tour of Carmen and Bill's beautifully crafted tiny home. This tiny home is extremely unique and while I don't wanna give everything away, make sure that you stay tuned to hear the details on the kitchen countertops and the arched roof. And if you're like me and you enjoy tours of unique homes, make sure that you subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new video. So we went from our home in Florida, which was approximately 5,000 square feet, to this 400 square foot tiny house. We decided to downsize because we wanted more freedom in our lives and not have all the extra work to do just to maintain a big house. You just accumulate so much when you have a big house over 21 years. And so when we decided to downsize, we didn't really realize how much work it was going to be. We just feel like a huge burden has come off of our backs and that we're ready to enjoy life a lot more. I did not want to look at other homes and copy that. So the inspiration really came from just having unique features. Our home, when we first designed it and presented it, it was very, very custom. We had the design done, but Rob, he is a true artist. His art is very much displayed in this home. Everything he's done enhanced the house. I'm able to express myself and every feeling that I have is I pour it into it. I mean, when I pick up a board, I look at the grain. It's all important to me and most people don't even see it, but I see those details and they mean something to me. I don't have a lot of opportunities to express myself this much in a tiny world. It's pretty majestic tiny, isn't it? Very excited to be here in our new tiny house. It was moved up here only three days ago to what they call the mountain. We're basically living off grid right now. They still have to get the electricity in. Right now we're using a generator and we're hoping within two months, everything will be in the septic, the electric, and we're gonna start landscaping, putting in our back deck. This is a uh, 10 by 40 tiny house. It is about 25,000 pounds. The house is about 14 feet tall. We have about 16 windows in it. We wanted the big windows for the views because we have beautiful views up here. We decided to go with a metal roof just because of the longevity and also we like the looks of the metal roof. We wanted to go with uh, the LP siding. We decided to do a little bit of an angle at the back. We just like the two colors that went together. The rear door will be the main entrance to the house. That door enters into a mud room. One of the features that we wanted were some plant shelves. Right now we have artificial plants because we're going into the winter season. My wife comes up with these awesome ideas as far as decorating the house. So this is on the uh, back side of our tiny house. And this is our air conditioner. And this basically runs two mini splits that are inside the house. And we decided with the size of the house, 10 by 40, that we needed two mini splits. So what, that's what we went with. I'm gonna take you inside and my wonderful wife, Carmen, will show you the inside of the house. So Jenna produced a video back in 2018, What I Hate About Tiny Homes. And this is probably one of the things that I most used from that video. 
she said that she didn't like when you entered the house you didn't you entered right into the living room this whole mud room area was created because of that idea so we have a separate mud room this place will get muddy i don't care we wipe our feet we put our shoes down in here we hang up all our stuff here and it's been great as we continue down the mud room we also have Part of it is the utility room and we have a stackable washer and dryer it is the splendid they're made mostly for rvs but they are wonderful for tiny homes and then right across from us this is the downstairs bathroom one of the things we fight about is the bathroom who gets there first who gets to take their shower first in a tiny space you really can't share the bathroom so that was one of my important things the value of two different bathrooms is to stay married <laughs> we have this built here for our cats litter robot so this is the perfect dimensions for that this is going to be an area for our hamper which is already in here and this is not going to be a closet for clothes it's going to be just all towels linens and the very top one is going to be cleaning supplies all our toilets are regular toilets we have city water sewer and electric in this mountain area and so we didn't have to go with the compost toilet Right over here we have an Ikea sink. I call it the skinny sink. Complete shower on this side. Okay, so now we're gonna head up to the man cave. So this area is in the very rear of the home and we're calling this area the man cave. Bill loves football and we have a large screen TV which we still have to get out of storage and we're gonna put it right there this is to me a very cozy TV area I have a lot of different pillows and stuff it also will be a spare bedroom for guests all right let's head downstairs Some of the stuff we wanted to accomplish was space. I wanted at least always five feet. Once you get into here, of course this narrows down, but yeah, I wanted it to have the minimum of five feet and some areas are even larger. I love our kitchen. It's a U-shaped kitchen, which is very functional for cooking. The dishwasher was a must. It's only a half dishwasher. This is a smaller sink, but it's very deep. I didn't want to have this all being sink. If you were to use this to put some dishes on it and dry them here, the water will trickle down, down into the sink. We also have some room in here. We could put dishes here. This also lifts up. We could use this as extra area for prep work. This was also something else that I had from the very beginning was this shelf. It was like a floating shelf. A lot of this glassware, you could see the sun or the light come through and that was very important. We limited the amount of drawers in the cabinets. I did that just because I like baskets. I really love baskets. And I wanted a few areas that would be able to be for our knives and spoons and forks. We wanted to have a gas range. We do not have an oven in this home. We are planning on building uh, an outside deck and the oven's gonna go outside. Bill does the majority of the cooking now. When he retired from work, I retired from cooking. And he cooks very good, so I enjoyed him doing all the cooking. So Rob approached me about this design he had. He said he had a vision about this. And he said, Carmen, I have an idea for your range hood and fan. And he said, I'm gonna do it beautifully. He gave me just a little bit of an idea. I had already said that I wanted wine holders. 
but I was thinking of them as being maybe a vertical and he said no just give me the liberty and the artistic freedom and I will do it and I said go for it so he came up with this it's beautiful we didn't know if we were gonna go all brown or if we were gonna go all natural and then all of a sudden one day he says we'll just go two tones and that's what we did we've done that all throughout as you can see I think it's lovely and then he came up with this too. We had a microwave oven. You know, microwave ovens aren't always the most beautiful thing around. So he created this too to hide the microwave oven. This is part of Rob's magic. He designed this whole inlay in here. This is the Jordan River and it flows into the Dead Sea. And there's a little island that he put in here. And then down in here, it's very hard to see, but they are there. We have 12 stones. And that represents the 12 stones that were laid there during the crossing of the Jordan River into the Promised Land. This whole idea came from Rob. I didn't even know it. He, he said, I had a vision about this. I really want to do it. And I said, go for it. We're going to give you free liberty to do whatever you want to create with our kitchen. And we've been re really happy about that. When I first came up with this idea of having the arch, I know that sometimes people put collar beams, you know, especially in large homes. And I thought of one one collar beam right in the center let's do it as an arch and then it was rob who had a vision and he said carmen we've got to have three of these it's going to be for architectural design it's going to look wonderful and so we just said again go for it <laughs> and we're very happy we did so the shelf was an idea so that when the arches were created they would have a place to land I thought, well, that would be also the perfect place to put in direct lighting. So all that was planned out so that we could have the lighting and at nighttime with this on and the lights just kind of coming up. It just gives it that nice little cozy feeling and I love it. Now we're coming into the lounge area. You could sit here, maybe have a glass of wine and just enjoy yourself. This picture right here, my parents brought it from Cuba. This is the church of Carmen de la Soledad. And my mom, she named me after that church. I was born in Cuba and my first language was Spanish. Buenvenido a nuestra casa. So now we're walking into our den. This was originally gonna be our master bedroom. However, the loft above became our master bedroom. My husband loved it up there. He thought it was like a tree house. When we get older and we need to use the first floor space for a master bedroom, then we could go ahead and come down here if we need to. For right now, this is gonna be like a little reading area, a little additional space for when family and people gather. So this painting right here, we, we got it when um, my husband and I were dating. My husband grew up part of his life in Honduras and it just reminded him of his life in Honduras. Of course, it's a Spanish style painting and uh, we love it and we've had it since, you know, it was one of our, the first things we bought together. One of the unanticipated features that we were able to add to our tiny home is the basement. It's called a reverse loft. We're calling it the basement because it's a cute name. And as most basements are, it's very utilitarian. So we have this exposed pipes and we have our hot water heater here, but it also has our yoga mat and it has my workout recumbent bike, and it has plenty of room for closet space. So I'm not in workout clothes, but I can, this is how I would do it if I was, you know, truly working out. <laughs> so these stairs right here, they're oak stairs and they left the arch opened and it kind of continues with the arch theme and it leads up to our bedroom. And as I walk up the stairs, we enter into the office area and I have beautiful view of the front. This is absolutely the most beautiful view I've had in any office in my life. This office has the mini split, the second mini split in it, and it keeps me very nice and toasty if it's cold. As we walk on, we have the bathroom area in here. It's a full bathroom.
one of the things I'd like to point out about this bathroom is that I had the closet here be a long closet. This is a place that we could put the brooms and everything that's tall. There's always a problem when you live tiny sometimes that you don't have a place to put your brooms and your uh, vacuum cleaner. So this has this area in here. So now let's head to the bedroom. It has a king size bed in it. Plenty of space, way more than a lot of lofts have. We also have another closet in this space right here. And then, of course, behind us, we get to see the arches, we get to see below, and we get to see the lighting, and it's just, it's just a wonderful little area. We have everything that we really desired and wanted in this home. Thanks for watching this week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more tours of tiny homes in this tiny house community or an overall tour of the tiny house community itself, make sure that you check out our links in the description.